So the Z Fold 5 has been in the lab for, I want to say, just about two full weeks, maybe a little bit over, give or take. So it's time to go ahead and give it that kind of first impressions review treatment that we always do. Three pros, three cons. This is the Z Fold 5, two weeks later. So right off the bat, I do want to go ahead and get out of the way. The Fold 5 is super, super similar to the Fold 4. And I stand by even two weeks later, um, the kind of sentiment that I made that if you own a Z Fold 4, you can sit this one out. Um, like I said, I had the Fold 4 move to the Fold 5. Yes, you can definitely sit this one out. Um, but there are a few key things that not so much push the bar forward coming from the fold four, but just, you know, looking at foldables in general that I do want to cover because they are a really big deal. So the way I want to do this, I'm going to switch it up just a bit. We're going to knock out the cons first, because I think some of those cons are just a little bit more important that I really want Samsung, you know, to gravitate to and, and to really understand what's going on. So let's go ahead and switch over to the top down. All right. Now, with the Z Fold, starting off with the cons, right away the very first one and it's kind of the elephant and i know a lot of people are talking about it it's you know kind of divisive to say the least or, or, or controversial and that's going to be the cover display so let me kind of air out how ike feels about the cover display so i've never been someone to hate this cover screen like i know that there's people who hate the cover screen for them, it's unusable, all, all of that good stuff. And, and that's fine and well, right? Um, obviously, my hands are about average size. You know, I don't have overly big hands. I can't, you know, palm a full-size basketball, stuff like that. But the cover screen for me, while not being my favorite on any foldable, hasn't been, you know, a huge detriment. Um, anytime I'm saying, like, scrolling social media, this, this is perfectly fine to me. I can still read everything. If I need to make the text a little bit bigger, I obviously can do that in the display settings. But just, like, scrolling, I don't have any issues. And when it comes to scrolling, using a cover screen that's a bit taller rather than shorter and wider can also be beneficial just for the simple fact that, you know, the taller you have it, the more content you're going to be able to fit. So let me bring in the Pixel fold here and let me see if i can kind of demonstrate that for you all i'll see if i can get these to line up exactly right uh, all right cool so you can kind of see it there on the z fold 5 i'm actually able to see about two full tweets and like the very top of that third tweet we're on the pixel fold while it is wider i can only see you know one and a half tweets so having that taller aspect ratio is definitely beneficial in some ways it's not just a kind of you know this is the best and this is um, you know objectively better or anything like that i i disagree with that sentiment um i think what it's going to come down to a lot is like everything in life and everything when it comes to dealing with these smartphones, it's subjective. If you're someone who, you know, finds this comfortable and you can do what you need to do on it, not a problem. You know, you still have your access to the edge panel. You can bring in, you know, floating applications. Like here, I'll bring in the calculator and you can see like, yeah, it, it is pretty small, but I can still, you know, two plus two equals four. You know, I, I can still use that. Now, again, it's going to depend on your hand and finger size and things like that. The biggest area that I see a lot of people, you know, really... It, you know, become irritated or frustrated is when you bring the keyboard into the mix. So I'll type out, this is a test of the cover screen on the Fold 5. So you can see my hands aren't the biggest. I can type that and I got, you know, no real issues in terms of being able to, you know, do what I need to do and no typos or anything like that. So like I said, it's all really going to depend on what you're doing. But my kind of philosophy with the cover screen all comes down to what am I going to be doing on the device? Am I doing something on the device that I can do with one hand? If so, I'm pretty much going to be using the cover screen. If I need to type out like a full blown email or an essay or something crazy like that, then obviously I'm going to open the bad boy up and go in from the cover screen. So. Like I said, my, my whole philosophy on the cover screen is that, yes, I would like it to be, you know, a bit wider, not as wide as the Pixel Fold. That form factor works for the Pixel Fold, mainly because of how short it is rather than tall. 
Um, but I would like to see them add maybe about another two millimeters or so to this form factor. Um, just that way your, your fingers have a little bit more room to breathe when you are typing with two hands. Um, anything I'm doing with one hand though, I have absolutely no issues whatsoever. So that's kind of where I sit on the cover screen. Um, yes, I wish it was a little bit wider, but at the end, it's definitely not unusable for me. And if it is unusable for you, that is totally fine and 100%, you know, respect to you. All I would say is like, let's just make sure that when we're saying things are unusable or things are trash or things are bad, let's make sure we preface that with the, in my opinion, or for me personally, or in my experience. Like, I feel like those are indicators that need to be added, especially when you're in this type of space where you're you know reviewing consumer electronics because someone who has a completely different workflow from you could take what you're saying and apply that to their workflow rather than understanding that you're saying in your opinion i see the same you know trend happening with the pixel fold where people are just like oh my god these bezels are so bad these bezels are so trash and you know this phone is so hot and things like that where it's like okay but not everyone is going to have that exact same experience. So you always got to preface it with the whole, you know, in my opinion, or for me in my size hands, this is unusable. I think as long as we do that and we kind of give those little disclosures, perfectly fine, because then your audience understands, hey, for him, it might be unusable, but for me, I can get done everything I need to get done. So that's where I'll leave the cover screen. Um, like I said, Overall, would love for it to be just a little bit wider, just to make it a little bit less cram when you're typing. But like I said, for, for me so far, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with, with the cover screen. So next up, and I actually left the S Pen case on, which I have a video for that. If it hasn't already dropped, it'll be dropping here shortly with the S Pen. So let's talk S Pen. So S Pen on the Fold, I feel like was obviously like the next step for the fold i feel like this could become like the true galaxy note replacement one because you just have this super big internal screen so when you have like this bigger internal screen obviously you're gonna want to do things like writing and you know all of that good stuff there so like i said it, it always just felt like this was kind of like the natural step for having you know s pen functionality built in now where i would say the s pen functionality kind of falls short is going to be storing the pen so currently right now you have to have the um s pen case here so i'm actually rocking it here which is this slim case you have to have this slim case to kind of house your s pen or else you're gonna be you know, dragging along an S Pen with you in like a separate bag or in your pocket or something like that, and nobody wants to do that. We want a Z Fold with the S Pen built into the bottom. Now, this kind of goes with the cover screen getting wider because if they make the cover screen just a little bit wider, well then you get a lot more space to be able to fit an S Pen in. And to be able to do something else we're gonna talk about here in just a little bit. So I don't have any problems with the S Pen. Um, I do wish that this one, as far as the S Pen case, was the Bluetooth version. So you could use it to like take pictures and all your little Harry Potter wand gesture stuff. Um, I would like to see that here, but unfortunately it's just not, it is what it is. Um, but I do like having the S Pen as like that extra input method, whether I want to edit, you know, videos on the go or, you know, whether I'm doing thumbnails on the go or whatever, just using it as like a pointer tool or letting my kid, you know, color on, on my phone or whatever. I would love to have this built in because I love having the S Pen as a there when I need it and not there when I don't type of situation. So um, dig this case. It's pretty dope but would like to see a future where S Pen is obviously built in. And if, you know, rumors and prototypes are any indication, Samsung is heavily working on that. So I would hope to see that along with a wider cover screen next year. Now, rounding out my last con, uh, I want to go ahead and talk, and this one is, it isn't the biggest for a lot of people. Most people don't even care, but it's the cameras. And it's not the cameras in the way that you think. Um, these cameras are great, and we're actually going to talk about that here in a little bit too. It's the lack of periscope that irritates me with these cameras. Um, Samsung is one of the pioneers when it comes to foldables, and even here on their fifth generation, they're still missing things that say, you know, Google, just for example, and just because I can reach them, it's the closest one I have. 
they're adding Periscope cameras to their foldables. You also got other manufacturers like Xiaomi, like Vivo, like Huawei, who are throwing Periscope zoom on their cameras. Now, if you had an overall smaller device, like you know the Oppo Find N or something like that, where just the physicality of that device is so small, then it becomes understandable, right? But when you have a device that the Pixel Fold is actually thinner than the Z Fold 5, the Huawei is thinner, the Xiaomi is thinner, and they're squeezing in periscope zooms, I can't really give you know Samsung a pass or, or, or say, well, you know, it is what it is. They couldn't fit it because manufacturers are fitting them in, you know, with less space in terms of the thinness of their device. Now their devices are bigger in a sense of like when you're opening it, it's just you know physically bigger. But that's why you know we're saying people have been asking for a bigger cover or wider, not bigger, wider cover screen for a while. Make the cover screen wider because when you make the cover screen wider on this end, you also have to make the back you know equally wider to match the two sides together. So you can make this back end wider and fit a periscope camera in there. You know, hopefully, um, obviously, I, I don't know what it takes to you know, develop and design these devices, but still, I feel like overall where the Z Fold line is, they just need to go a little bit wider. It's gonna give them space to do some really dope things. And if you don't understand why Periscope is important, um, I'm, I'm gonna be honest, and I, I don't mean any disrespect when saying this, but you probably haven't been to a concert, you probably haven't been to a zoo. Um, if you've been to a zoo, then you already know the animals love to stay in the very back away from the cameras and all of that. So having that extra reach to be able to, you know, not get these, you know, water painting looking digital photos, but actual optical zoom is really, really dope. Um, there was a picture that I actually posted. I'll see if I can pull it up here on the Pixel Fold. Um, there was a, a picture that I posted. Uh, where I actually was able to get a really dope shot of the squirrel. And actually, I have a video here where I was using the 5X. So I'll, I'll just show you all that. Let me make sure I got the volume turned down. Yeah, so volume's turned down. So here's one. That's from the 5X. Now, look how crystal clear and sharp that is. Just catching the squirrel in its natural habitat. I didn't want to disturb it. I just wanted to catch it. It looked really dope. Yeah, you see me punching in even more and then kind of coming out a bit. But it's shots like this that I love to be able to get with these smartphones, man. Like being able to go into the 2X here, then punch back into the 5X. So this is why Periscope is necessary. You can catch some really, really cool shots, you know, that otherwise you wouldn't be able to capture. Um, here's the actual photo that I was talking about. And that's at 5X. I would have never been able to catch that optically. I don't talk digital because digital just isn't as good in my opinion. But I wouldn't have been able to catch that shot. So to have something like that and be able to catch that with my smartphone just really kind of sold me on having a Periscope, man. So Samsung with Z Fold 6 Ultra or Z Fold 6 whatever, please get, give us a Periscope. Please do it. Um, but but th those are the three kind of big major cons for me personally. Um, and even with those three, I don't think any of them are deal breakers in a sense like because of this, you should not buy this phone. I, I, I totally disagree uh, with that sentiment. I think it just ultimately comes down to, you know, making sure that you understand what it is you're getting into and you understand, you know, what you're buying when you buy this product. But Let's switch over to the pros and right where we left off with camera, I'm gonna pick right back up. So while it doesn't have a periscope zoom, I can say that this is the first Galaxy Z Fold device, first Galaxy Z Fold that I actually feel confident enough in the cameras that I would not bring an extra device or like a pixel or anything else with me for camera. This is the first one that I feel that way. Now, is that to say that this is as good as what you're getting on the S23 Ultra or any of those Ultra or Pro devices? From a hardware perspective, just physical hardware, no. You're still getting cameras that are more equal to like the S23 Plus and the normal S23. But in terms of the output that you're getting from these cameras, I think you're gonna be pleased about it. I know a lot of the times we look at spec sheets and we see that the cameras don't properly align. So we immediately start saying, well, these cameras aren't gonna be good enough. These cameras aren't gonna be good enough. When in actuality, if you actually took the time to use the cameras, you would understand that while from a hardware perspective, they may not be you know, on the same level. And I get the folks who say for this cost, 1800, I want the best and I get that. I don't disagree, um, but again, physics. Uh, but even with that being said, I think if people would actually take the time to use these cameras and really try it, 
they would find that these cameras hold up and even like the cameras on the Pixel Fold and the cameras on the Vivo X Fold and all these other foldables, they hold up really well. Um, a lot of the you know work when it comes to smartphone cameras is software. It's the reason why Google was able to take a device like the Pixel 5 and come out with photos that look just as good as say like an S22 Ultra or an iPhone, I think it was a 13 uh, Pro Max at the time. Uh, that's the reason why, you know, that they were able to do that because they lean so heavily on software. Now, that's not to say that software is the end all be all. Obviously, the better and more capable hardware you have, it allows your software to kind of breathe some and you don't have to go as processed, but just still. Um, I remember last year I did the blind, um, the blind camera comparison between the Z Fold 4 and the S22 Ultra, and most people picked the Z Fold 4. And I even picked the Z Fold 4. So to say that these cameras just aren't flagship level or they're not good enough, like if you're talking about the lack of periscope, okay, I can get behind that. But if you're talking about overall camera performance, you are sadly mistaken. Like you are sadly mistaken. And again, that's in my opinion because everyone's camera needs are different. But for the type of shots that I shoot, which is like if I go to a new place and I want to take a picture of some buildings, if I want to take a picture of my kids, take a picture of my mom's dog, pet, stuff like that, th these cameras haven't really let me down yet. Now, that's not to say that they still don't have those typical Samsung quirks, things like, you know, the shutter not being as fast as we would like, um, also being just a bit too bright and obviously Samsung having those punchy colors. If you like that, it's more of that here. If you don't, this one isn't gonna change your mind. That is Samsung through and through. You just kind of have to like that processing. Um, but overall, these cameras are great. And I'm, I'm really, really happy that this is finally a Galaxy Z Fold that I feel confident enough in saying that I would leave the Pixel home. You know, Now, is that to say I prefer this over Pixel processing? No, I, I still love my Pixel processing. That's never gonna change um, unless Samsung completely redoes their processing. But Overall, I'm, I'm quite happy with what Samsung has delivered with the camera performance here. So let's go ahead and move on to the next pro, which is going to be battery life, battery life, battery life, battery life. So with the Z Fold 4, I ranged anywhere from typically on average, it was about six hours of screen on time. Now, y'all know me, my famous saying screen on time is just another number. It doesn't tell the full story. And I still feel that way here. Uh, but it's a lot easier to just kind of give y'all that and, you know, give y'all the amount of time it was off the charger. So, you know, typically I would say with the Z Fold 4, I would be off the charger for about, I would say maybe like 10 or 11 hours. And then um, screen on time on average is about six hours. Now peak, meaning I'm using light mode, the absolute best battery life I could get without turning off anything, just turning on light mode. Because light mode I'm cool with, but I'm not turning off like 5G and dark mode and switching to 60 hertz. Like, I'm, I'm just not gonna do that. I, I like all of those things. Um, but anyway, the absolute best battery life I was able to get out the Z Fold 5 was about six hours and 45 minutes, maybe seven hours. I'm trying to remember that off the top, but with the Z Fold 5, I'm getting, on average, I'm getting about 12 to 13 hours off the charger. Uh, so that's from the time I wake up to when I'm about to put it back on the charger. So about 13 to 14 hours. And then screen on time, on average, I'm averaging about seven to seven and a half. I say in between there because it kind of fluctuates, but I would say the least seven hours at the absolute peak, meaning using light mode and all of that stuff, I was able to get about nine hours and 15 minutes of screen on time. So that should tell you right then and there from jump, when it comes to the battery life, the Z Fold is not playing around. Now, I have yet to use another foldable with the 8 Gen 2, which is you know a huge contributing factor to why this device gets such good battery life. Um, but yeah, as of right now, this is the best battery life I've ever experienced on any foldable. Um, the Pixel Fold with the Android 14 beta gets really close. Um, I would say if I average about seven to seven and a half hours of screen on time on the Z Fold 5, the pixel is very much that seven. Like I'm getting between six and a half and seven, which the way I feel is if I can get, um, if I can get seven hours of screen on time with the foldable, that's amazing battery life because you're pushing an almost eight inch display. So on Android 14 beta, I would say on average, it's closer to that seven hour mark consistently, but the Z Fold 5 definitely edges it out on standard mode. 
I would say my screen on time is about eight hours or so. Um, I'm, I won't say it averages about that, that eight hours or whatever the case may be in terms of peak, but like I said, you definitely see the increase in battery life using that light mode for sure. But battery life is definitely something that they were able to really tune in well. And we kind of saw that with the S23 Ultra and they just carried it over here to the Fold 5. So if you're familiar with that phone's battery life, I'm not going to say you're going to get the same exact battery life here, but I would say that it's close enough that it was indistinguishable for me personally. Um, the S23 Ultra is a fantastic phone, especially from a battery life standpoint. I would say that this falls maybe right under in terms of battery life, which if this is falling right under the S23 Ultra, you're not going to have any issues in terms of battery life. I never had battery anxiety. I never felt like, oh my God, I got to hurry up and get to a charger. I never felt like that with the Z Fold 5. So kudos to Samsung for the battery life on the Z Fold 5. And the last, the last pro that I want to talk about, and I saved it for last because this is probably my favorite aspect of this device. I know people are going to be like, wow, Ike. But it's the outdoor brightness. Good God, this phone gets bright. And that's saying something when foldables for so long, their inner screens have never been as bright as their outer screens or as bright as their slab counterparts. The Z Fold 5 is the brightest screen I have ever used on a foldable. Now, I know Xiaomi just pushed out the Mix Fold 2 uh, or the Mix Fold 3, I'm sorry. That one is supposed to go up to, I think, either 2000 or 2500 or something like that. Um, but again, I, I haven't tested that one out yet or whatever the case may be. Um, but yeah, overall brightness, crazy 1750 nits. Um, it does get brighter, obviously, than my Pixel Fold. The Pixel Fold, I can see it in, in bright sunlight conditions, like peak lighting conditions, but I would definitely say it is far more of a struggle. Um, not that I can't see it, but it is more of a struggle than the Z Fold 5. The Z Fold 5 looked like I was looking at the screen indoors, and I don't even notice a super big, you know, thermal or battery drain due to pushing the screen to be that bright. Whereas like on the Pixel Fold, if I have that out in bright light and I start to go ahead and use, you know, the screen at its brightest and I see that brightness kick in, it'll maybe hold that sustained brightness for say maybe 10 or 15 minutes where the z fold i didn't notice it you know pull the brightness back and again that's just a sentiment to you know qualcomm using tsmc for their chip fabrication to keep things efficient and keep things cool now this device did warm up don't get me wrong we had about a night like mid to, to low 90 day but it was a feels like 115 or something outside over the weekend and i took this phone with me out the phone did get warm, like the phone was hot, the phone was warm, but again, like I said on my Pixel Fold, I didn't notice any type of functionality missing, my refresh rate didn't throttle, the screen was on that extra brightness kicking in 17, 15 nits, and everything just ran like a dream, it just ran like a champ. So, like I said, when it comes to that peak bright daylight conditions, if you're out in those type of environments, like maybe you do construction or maybe you're out, you know, doing like telephone pole work for Spectrum or something crazy like that. There's a guy literally right outside my window doing it. Um, but yeah, like if you're in those type of situations when you're outside in the bright sun all the time, the Z Fold will probably be the better device for you in that scenario just because it can handle those thermals a little bit better due to the efficiency of the chip and the screen just gets significantly brighter. So definitely something to factor in, but that is probably my favorite feature of this particular device. And I know that that sounds crazy. When devices can do this, my favorite feature is the fact that it gets really, really bright. So love that aspect of this phone, man. But overall, I think that this is a really, really dope device. Now, not trying to look at it from the standpoint of full four versus full five, because obviously it's... It feels, I'm going to use this reference from one of my favorite movies. And if you've seen it, you'll know exactly what I'm saying. It's same, same, but different, but still same. And that's kind of what this feels like. Kudo points to you if you know what movie that's from. Um, but, and that's what it feels like. Like there's a lot that is the exact same as the full four. But there are some different things that I think we need to give praise and give kudos for. Right. But ultimately, when it's all said and done, if you have the full four, the experience does feel very much the same. Right. So, like I said, if you have a full four and maybe you need the extra brightness, maybe you want the extra battery, 
you know, go, go ahead and handle your business. I'm not going to be in anybody's pockets, but to say that this device is bad or that they refined it and it's not good enough or it's not worth it. No, I, I, I sorely disagree with that sentiment. Um, we also have to remember not everyone is coming from a Fold 4, and for some people, this is their first foldable. And if this is your first foldable, I think Samsung got enough on par with the S23 Ultra. Um, there are a couple of things that's like uh, like the S Pen and not having the Periscope that are, that are still pain points, but I think overall, it's close enough to where I'm kind of like, eh, okay, okay, I can definitely see where they're headed, so... Samsung, you already know the assignment. You already know what you need to work on. Wider cover screen, get that S Pen built in there, and also get us a Periscope Zoom. Those would be kind of like the super heavy hitters and things like that. But overall, that's where I'm going to put a pin in this one. Let me know in the comment section below, how do you feel about the Z Fold 5? Did you purchase? Did you not purchase? If you didn't purchase, why didn't you purchase it? If you did, Tell me how you're liking it. I want to talk Z Fold 5 down in the comment section below. But as always, thank you so much for the love and the support. This is Ike's Tech Talk. I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace.